Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems. It's Technical Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about some specific characteristics of our patent pending optic cut, why it exists, what's different about it, a few specific things that we've recently learned about some of the optics in the market, um, and really why it's better. All right. So, so first, you know, what is what is the optic cut, and why is it different? Uh, well, so like many that are out there, the optic sits low in the slide. Okay, that's great. We mount that optic as low as we possibly can without getting into some of the inner workings of the slide. All right. So by mounting the optic as low as possible, we can use sights that are, for the most part, kind of a standard height, not some big, tall, goofy suppressor sights. And that means it fits uh, with more holsters. Uh, it means that you, that you get a nice co-witness without requiring very high sights on the gun. Okay. Um, so for, for most of the optics that this system fits, which would be the Holosun and the Trigicon optics, uh, it would be a handful of other brands that kind of fit that same footprint, um, Vortex Viper. So for those optics, you get a nice lower one third co-witness with our sights. Uh, if you're talking about the Loophole Delta Point Pro, great optic, but it's very tall. So you would need to put on a different set of sights if you wanted to co-witness with the Delta Point Pro. That was just a decision we made. We wanted to have relatively low sights that would fit the majority of the market, not designed to just fit one particular optic. So different sights if you want to co-witness with the Delta Point Pro. It's a trade-off. Okay, so what about the actual connection to the slide? Well, one of the things that we're proudest of is uh, we actually relocated and redesigned the extractor depressor plunger assembly uh, inside the slide. And you can watch some of the other videos we put out that kind of explains how we did that. Um, but we did that to enable these screws to run almost to the bottom of the slide. So we have the longest screws out there, the strongest screws out there. Um, the Shadow Systems Optic Cut gives you the strongest possible connection between your optic and your slide, period. All right. Every, everything else out there has some compromise. Either it's a it's an adapter plate, or it's very very small screws, or uh, you know it's it's posts. Um, those are all kind of compromises to get around some of the inner workings of the slide. Well, we relocated them all together, and that's what's enabled us to do this. So it's a super strong direct connection to the slide, and it fits kind of a majority of the real serious brands out there. So we've got the Delta Point Pro, Vortex Viper. The, the Holosun, anything with an RMR footprint should fit. Um, so it doesn't fit everything, right? But for, you know, for serious combat options, I think we've pretty much got our bases covered and we've done it in a way that is very, very strong and very versatile. The other thing about the system that's a little bit different, really a lot different, uh, and kind of part of the secret sauce is we use a, a, a very hard polymer spacer. It's basically a non-compressible polymer that is designed to fit super tight. In fact, it's a zero tolerance fit. It's actually too big for the space that it is in technically. And that little, that little spacer, you can see it, it's behind this particular optic. That spacer completely removes whatever little tiny bit of play there is between the optic and the slide. So it, it becomes completely rock solid. You cannot twist it. You see, even some of the machine bosses and machine slides out there where you think, oh, wow, I've got steel to, to optic. That's going to be as tight as it can be. You know, the greatest machinist in the world still needs to have a little tiny bit of fit between the optic and the slide. And so you always are going to have a little bit of play. It might not be much, and it may not be much to, for a practical combat pistol distance, but depending upon your optic and your slide, it, it could be substantial. So we've eliminated the possibility of that altogether. That's a big part of the patent pending status of this design. It's that spacer that just gets compressed into position and locks the, 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 uh, the optic to the slide. Zero fit. All right. So that's, that's kind of what's cool about this one. Uh, and we spent a lot of time, by the way, guys, beating on optics with dead blow hammers. And I am confident that there's, there's nothing else out there that's, that's this rigid. Um, okay. So that's the why behind it. I'm going to actually draw a little picture of it um, just so you guys maybe get a better idea. So let's say that we have our recess in the slide and then the slide continues out and then you know all the way out there is the ejection port and the rest of the slide. Okay, so we've got it pretty blown up. All right, well, either depending upon which optic you're using, either in the front or in the rear of that slot, there's going to be a spacer and we'll just draw it like this. That spacer has a little projection that actually goes back into the slide to help lock it in place. So we'll call this the spacer. So then when you mount your optic into position, let's say it's an RMR kind of setup. When you mount your optic into position, 
there is tremendous force that is applied in those directions, right? And it becomes this spacer, which technically is a material that's not really compressible, gets compressed. Uh, add to that screws that are custom designed to fit very tightly to the hole in the optic to further remove play. And then, you know, that screw goes deep, 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 deep. So, I mean, uh, the rail is actually right here. Um, we're almost to the rail in some cases, okay? So that's the magic of that super strong connection. In fact, in our manual, we kind of describe the process of installing that. And I just wanted to take a minute and talk about that because um, I get it. You know, you've, you've mounted optics on a gun before and I'm sure you've done all kinds of stuff. This is different, okay? It is a different design. That's why it has a patent pending status because it's unique and innovative and different. So um, please read the manual. We've actually got nice big pictures of how this all works. Uh, we include the right kind of Loctite to use because there's a special kind of Loctite that we recommend, so we include that. Um, and we also have a little table in here uh, that shows which screw and which spacer to use with each design. Okay, so you know you, you look at this table, there's an, a Trigicon RMR, spacer A at the rear, and screw number two. Okay, and so it all is explained there in the manual. There you can see a spacer waiting for an optic right there in the manual. Um, okay, well, on the hollow sun line, and this gets to the part about things kind of getting changed on us. On the hollow sun line, uh, the 507C is an example. So we designed the spacer and the screw to be compatible with both the hollow sun and the RMR, which is logical because they have the same footprint. Uh, the problem is, at some point, Holosun changed one little aspect of the design, which has caused the screws that we recommend to, to now be different. So I'll sum it up by saying, if you have a Holosun 507C V2, then you're going to want to use the screw that is identified for the Vortex Viper. That's listed as screw number one. Okay, it's the shortest one. Uh, so you would still use the spacer for the Holosun, uh, but you would use the screw for the Vortex. And let me explain kind of what they did. So, uh, Holosun, we'll just kind of draw, there's your viewed from above. Uh, they have kind of this recessed area, and then the optic goes around like that. Okay, and then there's, there's a screw right there and a screw right there. So these are the screw holes. We're viewing it from above. And this is, you know, your little solar thing is right here. Okay, so now we're looking at the hollow sun. Well, we designed, when we designed the heads of our screws, right, we want to have maximum engagement along that angle, right? So blow, blown up a little bit, you know, oops, that was kind of poorly done. Blown up a little bit. We want to have that angle match. We want to have lots of contact there with the screw head. And that's how we've designed it. Well, what we, what, you know, we're, again, we're filling as much of that space as possible. What, what Hollow Sun did was at some point they kind of moved this wall in a little bit. There's sort of a little low wall on either side of the optic. Um, I don't have a Hollow Sun here, but basically this, this wall here is kind of what I'm talking about. And what was happening was the diameter of our screw, which again was intended to have as much contact as possible, would kind of, kind of dig into and make contact with that wall. So basically the head diameter, which was optimized for a V1 hollow sun, suddenly was a little too big for a V2. So all that means is you go to the Vortex Viper screw in the same package, works totally fine. It's, it's still so over, you know, overbuilt bomb proof, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it just has a smaller head diameter. So that smaller head diameter then drops into position perfectly and, and you lock your optic in place. Okay, so just wanted to make that point to kind of summarize. Uh, it is a unique system, so please read the manual. If you follow the instructions properly, if you use the right screws, the right spacer, and you use the Loctite that we actually include, then you are gonna get bar none, rock solid, badass, combat worthy uh, connection to your slide, okay? Uh, and then outside of that, if you're a Holosun user, you're gonna wanna use the Vortex Viper screws uh, instead of the ones that are listed for Holosun uh, if it is a Holosun V2. All right, hope that's helpful. helpful. Uh, as always, we appreciate your comments and questions. We're always here. Give us a call, and I look forward to talking to you next Tuesday.